In this section, we're going to talk about uh, trigonometric substitutions. And these uh, types of substitutions can be effective when you have integrals involving the form uh, square root of a squared plus u squared, square root of a squared minus u squared, and square root of u squared minus a squared, where a is simply a constant and u is some function of x. So if you see that your integral has the form of a squared minus u squared, you can use the substitution u equals a sine theta. And but the reason that works is because if you use that substitution, then you would have a squared minus u squared would equal a squared minus a squared sine squared theta. And then if you factored out the a squared, you'd get 1 minus sine squared theta. And then you would have a squared times cosine squared theta for the result. And if you use the a squared plus u squared, if you have that type of integral, you could let u equal a tangent theta, and then a squared plus u squared would equal a squared plus a squared tangent squared theta, and then if you factor out the a squared, you get 1 plus tangent squared theta, and 1 plus tangent squared theta is secant squared theta. So that would, a squared plus u squared would just equal a squared secant squared theta, as I show over here. And then if you had u squared minus a squared, you could let u equal a secant theta, and then u squared minus a squared would be a squared secant squared theta minus a squared. And then if you factor a squared out, you get secant squared theta minus 1, which results in a squared times tangent squared theta. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. And I'm going to look at an example of this case 1 right here, the a squared minus u squared case. Okay, so in this example, um, I have uh, 1 minus x squared, which is really can be thought of as 1 squared minus x squared. So then I have x equals 1 sine theta. And so that would mean that I would want, if I did uh, 1 minus x squared, that would equal cosine squared theta. See, because up here is the form, so... Uh, that tells me that the 1 squared right here tells me that the 1 squared minus the x squared should equal 1 squared cosine squared theta. So in this case, 1 minus x squared, because the x is the u in this case, so 1 minus x squared would equal cosine squared theta. And also, if you took the derivative of 1 sine theta, you would simply get dx would be cosine theta d theta, because the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta. Okay, so now... I can actually replace x and dx in this integral with the substitution. So let's replace x with sine theta. So that would give me sine cubed theta. And then let's replace uh, the 1 minus x squared, because I know 1 minus x squared is cosine squared theta. So let's put that there in the square root. And then the square root of that would be cosine theta. I wrote absolute value of cosine theta but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to say that's cosine theta. And then dx is cosine theta d theta. So now you know that this cosine theta and this cosine theta will just cancel out. And now you just get an integral of the form sine cubed theta d theta. Now I can do um, my trick I learned earlier to integrate sine cubed theta. So just write sine cubed theta as sine times sine squared theta. So, but we know that sine squared theta can be replaced with 1 minus cosine squared theta. So I kind of skipped that step. But, but if you break this up into sine times sine squared, then you will have sine theta times 1 minus cosine squared theta. And then uh, I can use a u substitution here by letting u equal cosine theta and then du would have to be minus sine theta d theta. So if I take this integral here, let me move the sine over here with the d theta, and then remember I need a, I need a minus 1 in here to make this be du, so multiply the inside by minus 1 and the outside by minus 1, and now this is going to, this 1 minus cosine squared theta is simply 1 minus uh, u squared, and then the minus sine theta d theta is du. So I have minus the integral, I have minus the integral 1 minus u squared theta, uh, I'm sorry, 1 minus u squared du. And then um, 
Actually, if you go ahead and distribute the minus through, that'll flip that around, and we can write that as u squared minus 1 du. Well, then I can integrate this and get u cubed over 3 minus u plus a constant. And now I'll go ahead and replace u with the substitution cosine theta, and I get cosine cubed theta over 3 minus cosine theta plus the constant. And now if you go to your triangle, see we know that sine theta is x over 1. So if you were just to go write your triangle out and, you know, your right triangle, then we know the opposite side would be x, the hypotenuse would be 1, and then you could show that the adjacent side would be square root of 1 minus x squared. So therefore you could then get cosine theta as square root of 1 minus x squared over the hypotenuse, which is 1, so cosine theta is just square root of 1 minus x squared. And so now I can go back to uh, this expression here, and I can replace the uh, cosine theta with square root of 1 minus x squared. So instead of cosine cubed theta, I have square root of 1 minus x squared quantity cubed. And instead of cosine theta here, I have square root of 1 minus uh, x squared, and then plus a constant. And so that's how you uh, deal with a problem in that form. Okay, in this next problem, you actually have a, a u squared. You actually have u squared plus a squared here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let, um, you know, well, I know if this is u squared, then u has to be 2x, and the a has to be the square root of 9, which is 3. So this would be 2x quantity squared plus 3 quantity squared, and then that quantity squared. So what I'm going to do here, remember up here it said let u equal a tan theta. So if you go back and look, just take a quick look up here, when you have u squared plus a squared, it said let, let u equal a tan theta. So what I'm going to do here, since my u is 2x, I'm going to let the 2x equal 3, which is a tan theta. Well, then I can actually solve that for x, and I get x is 3 halves tan theta. And then uh, the derivative of this would give me the dx, so the dx would be 3 halves secant squared theta d theta. And then I know that this expression 4x squared plus 9, that, that expression is simply going to be a squared secant squared theta. And you can go back and look at the table, and you'll remember that that, that equals a squared secant squared theta. And then uh, since a is 3, then a squared would be 9. So I know that 4x squared plus 9 is the same as 9 secant squared theta. So now I can replace the 4x squared plus 9 here in the denominator and get 9 secant squared theta. And remember that quantity squared. And then replace the dx. The dx was here. And so I replace that with 3 halves secant squared theta. Now go ahead and square this, and you get 81 secant fourth theta. And then, of course, in the numerator, you have secant squared theta. And then I'm going to factor the three halves out. Okay, now also, um, in the next step, I'm going to do two things in the next step. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide secant squared theta from the numerator into secant to the fourth theta in the denominator. And that will give me secant squared theta in the denominator. And the other thing I did is I took, I factored 1 over 81 out of this. And if you take uh, 3 halves times 1 over 81, you actually get 1 over 54. Okay, so now I have 1 over secant squared theta in the integral. And 1 over secant squared theta is the same as cosine squared theta. And so now the next step, I'm going to use the cosine squared identity. The cosine squared theta is 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. So I'm going to take this integral, and I'm going to replace cosine squared theta with 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. And then now I have 1 over 54 times a half, so it gives me 108. And I know how to integrate 1 d theta. That's just going to be theta. And if I integrate cosine of 2 theta, uh, that's going to be sine 2 theta over 2. And then if I... Uh, Another thing I did here, since sine 2 theta can be written as 2 sine theta cosine theta, I can bring that identity out, and then the 2's will cancel. So basically now I have 108 
times theta plus sine theta cosine theta. And here it is down here. So that's 108 times theta plus sine theta cosine theta and then plus your constant. Now, a little bit of trig work. Since we know tangent theta is 2x over 3 from the top, then you can actually use that in your right triangle to get sine theta as 2x over square root of 4x plus 9. And you can show that cosine theta is 3 over square root of 4x squared plus 9. And also, we know that theta is, has to be the arc tan of this 2x over 3. Well, now that we have all of that stuff, I can replace the theta with that arc tan. And then I can just multiply the, what I had for sine theta and cosine theta together. So just multiply these two expressions together here. And then 2x times 3 is 6. So I'm going to get 6x on the top. 2x times 3 is 6x. And then on the bottom, if you multiply these two together, you just it just eliminates the radical. So finally, I get 1 over 108 times the arc tan of 2x over 3 plus 6x over 4x squared plus 9 plus c. And so that's the solution to that problem. All right, this last one here, I have square root of x squared minus 25 over x. So this would be like u squared minus a squared. And so when you have u squared minus a squared, you let u equal a secant theta. And then your u squared minus a squared will actually equal a squared tangent squared theta. So now I know that x squared minus 25 is going to be 25 tangent squared theta. So put that in the, in the radical. And we know that x is 5 secant theta. And by the way, dx, if you take the derivative of this, you get dx is 5 secant theta tangent theta d theta. So replace dx with 5 secant theta tangent theta d theta. And now let's clean this up a little bit. If you take the square root of this, you're just going to get 5 tan theta, and it's over 5 secant theta, and then you still have the 5 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Well, the 5s would cancel here, and the secants here would cancel, but you would still have this 5 here, and this tangent, and this tangent, so that would give me 5 tangent squared theta d theta. Okay, now I can replace tangent squared theta with the trig identity secant squared theta minus 1. And I just factored the 5 out of the integral. Now we know how to integrate 5 secant squared theta. 5 secant squared theta integrates to 5 tangent theta. And we also know how to integrate uh, 5 times minus 1. That would be minus 5. So if you integrate minus 5 d theta, you get minus 5 theta. So this is 5 tangent theta minus 5 theta plus c. And then up here, um, you can solve this and get that secant theta is x over 5. And if you know secant theta is x over 5, you can use your triangle to find out that tangent theta is actually the square root of x squared minus 25. And also, if you know that secant theta is x over 5, you can show that theta is the arc secant of x over 5. So now all I need to do now is replace the tangent theta with this square root and replace the theta here with this arc secant. And that will give me the final answer. So here I've got 5 times the square root of x squared minus 25 and then minus 5 times the arc secant of x over 5 plus a constant. And here's a couple of practice problems if you want to pause the video and go over them. And so I only did one video on this section, but I gave you three good examples to go by.